Hi there, my name is Kenzie. I'm offering you a Hatha yoga practice today here at the Everyday Counts program space. As you can see, I don't have any props, but if you'd like a pillow or a block or a chair or a blanket, please feel free. You can press pause anytime, you can take breaks. Please remember, I'm only here to make suggestions. So I'm going to suggest that we begin by finding a comfortable way of being. It might be lying down, it might be sitting upright in any comfortable fashion. And once you are comfortable, perhaps close your eyes and begin to breathe through your nose if you can. And allow yourself a few moments to simply arrive. You're feeling your body settling into stillness. And at the same time, tuning in to the movement of your breath. And softening your belly to receive the inhale. Softening your shoulders to release the exhale. Soft, deep inhale. And softer, slower exhale. And simply letting this be enough. Feel the breath rolling in deep. To feel the breath rolling out slow. If it helps, you could bring your hands to your abdomen or to your waist or side ribs. As you inhale, feel the abdomen expand under the hands. Exhale, feel that slow inward movement. And it's tempting to want to take the fullest inhale, offer the most complete exhale, but we're actually looking for that middle place, just a, a soft breath that lands deep, but doesn't have to fill all the way up. And a soft breath that leaves slow, but doesn't have to empty completely. This is just a soft allowing of the breath. Allow the breath to land deep and to leave slow. So let's offer three or four more breaths just like that. And here we are now perhaps with eyes still closed and only if it suits you, perhaps press a hand to the belly and one to the chest or even hover those hands in front. And offer yourself some sweetness, a kind word, a prayer, an affirmation just for you. Let's release our hands. We can open our eyes, perhaps give our legs a little shake if you've been seated. We are going to begin our practice by lying down, but before you lie down, just peek at me for a moment. I'm going to show us how we can maybe shake the whole body just a little bit, a little gentle, gentle shake here to let go of any, any extra tension. So once you're lying down, if you prefer to have the knees bent, I'm kind of just wiggling my feet forward and back. I'm starting to get a nice little wiggle through the body. If the legs are comfortable long, notice my feet. I'm just kind of rocking the feet forward and back, and that allows a gentle shaking of the body. And if this doesn't serve you, you can always shake through the hips or the chest. So lie down and get settled, and then see if you can give yourself a gentle shake. You might close your eyes. Again, you can breathe through the nose. And what we're doing is we're connecting to the fluid body. Our 
our bodies are a lot of fluid and we're kind of softening into that watery space, helping to release tension and awaken the whole body. So let's offer five or six more breaths here. And again, you can shake in other ways if you need to. Noticing what you can let go of here as you continue to breathe soft and deep. Inhale, softer, slower exhale. Let's offer one more slow breath in. And as we exhale, let's become still. And notice how that feels. Become still and to settle onto the floor. Wonderful. Let's slowly bend the knees and then lift one foot and then the other to hug the knees into the belly and we'll rock a bit from side to side. Noticing how that feels as you kind of smooth out the low back. And then perhaps we can begin to circle both knees together. Just a little bit of movement here as we continue to rock side to side. We're inviting a little bit of forward and back motion to the pelvis. You might change the direction of the circle. And then we'll bring those knees back to center. You might hold on to the backs of the knees here if that's comfortable. We'll bend and straighten the legs a few times, reaching those soles to the ceiling. And it's okay if you don't straighten the legs entirely. The hamstrings have a lot to say here. I love we're giving those legs a little upside down time and just a gentle easing into sensation of stretch. We can keep that breath nice and slow through the nose if possible. The body still perceives sensations of stretch as a bit of a stressor. So then keeping that relaxed breath lets the nervous system know this is all by choice. Yeah. The next time those legs move towards straight, let's keep them there. We might bring the inner edges of the legs and feet to touch. We might spread the toes wide and begin to flex the feet as we're reaching through those heels, drawing the toes closer. And now we'll keep those toes spread and begin to press up and away through the balls of the feet and then point the toes. Let's spread the toes as we begin to flex the feet. Keep those toes spreading as we press the balls of the feet away and then point. We'll do that a few more times. The rest of the body is hopefully comfortable and quiet. And those feet might have a lot to say. You might be feeling a little more stretch through the leg. Now let's try circling from the ankles. We're still spreading the toes. We're still pointing and flexing. But we've added this nice circular journey. You could change the direction of that circle. Maybe there's some tricks and cracks. Just letting this be enough. Maybe one more big breath in. And then we can come to stillness. Let's bend our knees. If it's comfortable, maybe we're gonna kick our feet a little bit. Really floppy, floppy calves, floppy ankles. If you like to multitask, you get the, at the hands, give them a little shake. I know this is pretty silly. We'll just do it a little bit faster for one more slow breath in. And then as we exhale, let's hug the knees to the belly, maybe letting those knees come out to the sides a bit and let everything settle for a few breaths. Perhaps closing your eyes. Wonderful. Okay, let's guide those knees in and bring the soles of the feet to the mat. So we're gonna take the feet pretty wide, right to the edges of the mat, and the knees are bent. Yeah, and then kind of like a good morning stretch, we're gonna reach the arms overhead. Or you can 
can yawn. Every time I reach my arms overhead, I yawn. Stretch, and then let those arms rest. Now, if they're not comfortable reaching overhead, they could be out to the sides a little bit. Yeah. Can you still see me? Yeah, great. And we'll allow both knees to fall to one side. And then to the other. And we'll do that a few more times. And for some of us, we're going to find a little outer hip stretch. We might find an inner thigh stretch. And so you're noticing sensation. And again, that nice relaxed breath lets us manage those sensations. And if it becomes a little too sensational, we don't have to go so far. Yeah. I'm going to add a little extra stretch on top of this. So as the knees fall to the right, you can keep them there. And now we're going to stretch the left side. So I'm going to find that left kneecap. Kind of feel like I'm stretching it away from me. Maybe pushing the left foot into the mat a bit. I'm lifting the left buttock and letting it peel off the mat a little bit as I stretch through that left arm. It's kind of a strong stretch and engagement. And then slowly release it. And now we'll do the same on the other side. So as the knees fall to the left, I'm going to stretch through the right side. I might press into that right foot. I might reach through the right knee, squeeze the right butt, let it peel off the mat, stretch through that right arm. And then slowly release. And so this may or may not speak to you. If it doesn't speak to you, just keep rocking those knees from side to side. If it does, I'm going to guide you into that once more on either side. So as the knees fall to the right, Let's push into that left foot a little bit. Let's stretch through the left side, squeezing the left butt. Let it peel off the mat. Stretch and reach through those left fingertips. And slowly release. The knees fall to the left. Let's push through that right foot. Squeeze the right butt. Let it peel off the mat. Stretch through those right fingertips. Feel it. Stretch it. Okay, so we can bring those arms down by our sides again. And then we can walk the feet in and let's hug the knees to the belly again for a moment. We'll rock from side to side. Just do a couple more things lying on our back. A little more challenge here for the muscles. And then we'll get on to all fours. So I'm bringing my feet back to the mat. I'm walking them about hip distance apart and then walking the heels towards me just a little bit. So as you can see, my shins are fairly upright. Another way to say that is my knees are over my ankles. My hands could be down by my sides, palms facing down, or we could turn the palms up, reach the arms out to the sides a bit more. Yeah. Lifting and spreading the toes for a moment. Lower those toes and just feel that connection of your feet to the mat. And I want you to notice if you can press the low back down into the mat. And as you do, your tailbone might curl up a little bit. You might feel your belly engage. And there's no space at the low back. And then you can relax that. Kind of like you're tilting the pelvis forward a bit, you're going to feel a little bit of space at the low back. So again, press the low back into the mat. The pelvis tilts back. We feel the belly strong. And then find that opposite movement. Tilt the pelvis forward. A little space at the low back. So we'll go forward and back a little bit here. Another way to say this is this is just a little bit of pelvic tilting, a little shifting forward and back. Yeah, great. So the next time you press the low back down into the mat, you're gonna feel the tailbone curl up to the ceiling. Let's press into the arms, press into the feet, and begin to peel our back off the mat. One vertebrae at a time. You're lifting your hips as far as is comfortable. And then slowly lowering back down again. Think about one vertebrae at a time. Think about lowering down with the low back pressed into the mat. That's going to feel like a strong core action. And then release for a moment and find that space beneath the back. And again, we're going to press down through the low back. No more space there. Tuck the tailbone to the ceiling. Peel the back off the mat as you slowly lift, 
Press through the feet. Let your glutes and hamstrings be strong here. And then slowly lower down. And as you lower down, we're pressing the low back down into the mat, feeling strong core here. And then we release their space at the low back. Let's do that three more times. I know this can be a great effort here. Curl the tailbone up. Begin to peel the back off the mat. You can press through the arms too. Press through the feet. And then slowly back down. As we do this a couple more times, if you need to take the feet closer or wider, if you need to experiment a little bit here, please feel free. Every body is different. Looking for a certain amount of stability. We're finding our strength, finding our own unique rhythm and form. And if you so choose, let's do one more here. Press the mat away. Press through the arms, press through the feet, strong legs. And then slowly, slowly back down. And as a little release here, a couple options. You could take the feet wide. You could rock the knees if that's a soothing movement for you. Or you could hug the knees to the belly. You could rock from side to side. You might slow down the breath here. There may have been a challenge here. The breath may have gotten shorter. And so tune into that breath, soft and deep, soft and slow. And then when you feel ready, let's roll over. Let's stop at seated here for a few moments. Yeah. So we'll continue that movement of the windshield wiper legs, as I like to call them. But this time we're seated upright. So I'm leaning into my hands, onto forearms if you need to, even leaning into a wall if you need to. My feet are wide, my knees are bent. I'm rocking those knees from side to side. It might feel a little bit different now that we're no longer lying down. We'll notice how that feels. Great. So I'm going to add a little twist here, and this is our first twist of the day. And we'll do it a few times to kind of find it. So we'll try it on the right side first. So let's meet at the center. I'm just moving in so I don't hit the wall. Um, we'll meet at center as let's allow the knees to fall to the right, I'm leaning into the right hand. Then I'm going to lift the left arm and slowly sweep it around behind. I'm going to let the head and neck turn as well. We might take a breath in, we might reach a little further. And then slowly come back. Yeah, it's kind of unraveling from that twist. The hand comes down, the knees come back to center. Let's go to the other side. If the knees are falling left, we're leaning into the left hand, sweeping the right arm off and around, letting the head and neck turn with the spine. Maybe inhale, reach a little further. And let's try that a few more times, either direction. So I'm coming back, hand comes down, knees come to center. And we're to the right again. We're sweeping the left arm off the mat and around behind. Slowly back. I like to imagine a spiral from the base of my crown, sorry, the base of my spine all the way to the crown of my head. And let's do once more either side. Nice soft belly allowing that rotation through the ribs, through the pelvis. but also noticing what you feel along the way. And if we reach a point where it's tricky to move through it, that's okay. We can soften, we can allow, we can stop right there. Great, so let's meet back at center. And we'll bring the legs out in front. Yeah, we can lean into the hands again. We'll check in with those feet. 
And so earlier in the practice, we lifted and lowered those legs and we checked in with the feet. We'll do the same here. We're going to spread the toes and we're going to flex the feet. Yeah, toes closer. We're going to keep those toes spreading, press through the balls of the feet, point the toes away. We'll do that a few more times. The legs might feel a little bit different in this position. You might feel the thighs engaging or the calves engaging. Yeah, you can gaze at those wonderful feet. Maybe we'll circle the ankle. And then change that direction. And so similar movement, different orientation to gravity. Good. And then we'll let that go. We could shake out the legs, we could shake out the hands. And now we're going to do a little bit of scooching. So I'm just going to come towards the back of my mat. Yeah, and it's okay here if the knees are a little bit more bent. For some of us, sitting upright is not comfortable with legs straight, and especially if there's lots of rounding in the back or the pelvis is tilted back. Bending the knees is going to give just a little more of an upright position. You can also bring your hands to the floor to help support you in an upright pose. So what I want you to notice here is that you can rock a little bit from side to side. Yeah, start to feel your ischial tuberosities, those bony bits at the bottom of the pelvis that you notice when you're sitting on a hard chair for a long time. Yeah. Hopefully your floor isn't too hard. Hopefully your yoga mat is a little bit soft. We found our sitting bones, and now we're going to see if we can move the sitting bones forward one at a time. And as we rock to one side, we'll bring the other one forward. And again, you can use your hands here to you know, bring that leg along or to help you balance as you move those hips along. And this might be a really unique movement, something maybe you've never done before, so it's okay if you're not making much forward progress, totally fine. This is a way to loosen up the low back and really connect it to the movements of the pelvis. So we can relieve a lot of tension over time. But at first it feels pretty awkward. So now we're gonna see if we can back it up. Yeah. Again, use as much support as you need to find this, and it's okay if you're not moving in a straight line. We can fix that as we go. You might feel all sorts of interesting things here. Yeah. So as we get towards the back of our mat, let's take a little break here. We're gonna lean into the hands, we're gonna bend the knees again. We'll rock those knees just to let go of any tension. So if you want to come back to that twisting movement, you're welcome to, or we can try the scooching one more time. Yeah, if you're up to that, let's give it a try. Um, sometimes just to make it a little bit silly, but also to help you find that pelvic movement, I like to add the arms like I'm going for a walk. So as the hip comes forward, the opposite arm comes forward. And you kind of notice that this is a lot like walking. In fact, this movement can improve walking. Yeah. Here we go, scooching to the front of our mat. Okay, so the trickier one is backwards, and I don't always find it, but as one hip goes back, the opposite elbow goes back. And there we go. Yeah, super cool, super casual. So healthy for the low back and hips, believe it or not. So we made it to the back. We're going to lean into the hands again. We'll bend the knees. Let's rock those knees one more time. Wonderful. Okay. So when you feel ready, let's take a little journey to hands and knees. So however you need to get there, you're going to slowly make your way to all four. You'll notice now if there's any tenderness under the knees, you can place a blanket or pillows under your knees. If there's tenderness in the wrists, there's a few options. Um, spreading the fingers wide and really rooting the edges of the palms, pushing the ground away can help a lot. But you could also come onto the tops of fists with the inner wrists facing, so right on top here. Or you could come onto forearms, even placing a pillow under those forearms if you want that same elevation like tabletop. 
So we've done a lot with the hips today, so let's kind of keep it going, inviting lots of blood flow, lots of movement. So I'm going to start to rock the hips from side to side. Still pushing the ground away, even gently shrugging the shoulders away from the ears. This is to help kind of build strength into this weight bearing um, through the shoulders and the hands. Now we can turn this into more of a circular movement. So we could rock the hips over to one side, we could circle them back around and across the heels, and then rock the hips to the other side and bring those hips to circle forward. So this is, could be a very small circle. Just kind of circling those hips around the body. It could be slowly growing a bit bigger. When the weight shifts forward, see if you can Push the ground away and even notice that there's this nice circular movement happening at the wrists, at the shoulders, at the knees, at the hips. So kind of letting the body, the whole body, take part here. And the next time those hips are moving back towards the heels, maybe we could change the direction. Yeah. Lean into those hips, you'll probably feel a bit of stretch. Again, we're spreading those fingers, pushing the ground away when the weight shifts forward. We could be on forearms here or fists. Now let's circle one more time. And then we'll meet in a child pose. So as those hips are pressing back towards the heels, we can drop the hips back as far as they'll comfortably go and walk the arms forward, resting the forehead. And if the forehead doesn't rest, that's okay. You could cross your forearms to rest the forehead. You could stack the fists. Uh, letting the hips drop towards the heels. Even widening the knees to make space for the belly. And maybe we close our eyes here. Soft, deep in-breath. And softer, slower out-breath. Couple more. Wonderful. So when you feel ready, slowly make your way back to your tabletop hands and knees. We'll move through a little bit of cat-cow just to increase mobility and strength and blood flow to the spine, to the pelvis, to the shoulders. So we're finding our neutral spine. And then we're going to tuck that tailbone under, something we already did today with bridge. This time we're tucking it down towards the floor and beginning to slowly round the spine. Drawing chin to chest, a little squeeze to the belly. And now we'll turn that tailbone up towards the ceiling. Pelvis tilts forward and we begin to slowly arch the spine. So maybe letting the chest drop, looking forward. And let's do that a few more times. Lead with the tailbone, tuck it under nice and slow. As we press the ground away, imagine spreading the shoulder blades apart. We'll turn the tailbone up. As we tilt that pelvis forward, letting the chest drop, let's shrug the shoulder blades together. We'll do that a few more times. You might even close your eyes here. Notice how your breath is showing up. And notice where you feel sensations of stretch. Notice the tilting of the pelvis. And the spreading and drawing together of those shoulder blades. Really nourishing the whole body here. This is one of my favorite movements. So 
tune in to the whole body. Even to delight in the architecture of the spine here and how it connects the whole body through movement. So once more in either direction. And I know the hands are working hard here, weight bearing. The shoulders are feeling engaged. And so let's slowly come back to center and just walk the hands towards us so we can come to kneeling and take a little break here. You could shake out the hands. Yeah, you could push in the knees more if you need to. We are going to come back to tabletop, but I thought it might be nice um, to do a little bit for the hands and feet. Um, so we're going to tuck our toes under. I know this is, can be quite uncomfortable. Unless you have an underlying foot condition, it's quite safe, um, but it's, it's pretty stretchy. So you can keep those toes tucked under or not, and you can untuck the toes at any time. So this could be enough stretch. If you want a little more of a foot stretch, you could drop the hips towards the heels. It really depends on your needs. And then we're gonna do a little bit of a hand exercise. So I'm gonna to turn to face you to make it easier. But again, give yourself permission to lift your hips off your heels at any time and to untuck those toes. Yeah. Okay, so here we are. We're gonna spread the fingers nice and wide. Yeah, the shoulders are relaxed. And now we're gonna bend just the digits, so just the fingers, not fists yet. Yeah, and we're going nice and slow to start. And then we'll go a little faster. And this can relieve um, tension in the hands and the wrists, and you might even notice the forearms are going even faster now. Especially if you do do fine hand work, or if there's swelling in the hands, or if you do a lot of texting, some texting fingers here. All right, a little faster. And then shake that out. Okay, we're gonna go on to the next one. If you need to lift the hips or untuck the toes, please feel free. Now we are gonna make fists and spread the fingers. And you could do this from seated if kneeling doesn't serve you. You could be in a chair here. You can do this one anytime. Sometimes I imagine I'm sort of flicking water off my fingers as I go a little faster. Kind of gives me some power here. Yeah. A little faster till it almost doesn't work. Again, you could lift your hips. You could untuck those toes at any time. Ooh, a little faster. Okay, shake that out. We've got one more to go. Quite the foot stretch if the toes are still tucked. So we're spreading the fingers wide. I like to imagine my thumbs are trying to get away from my pinkies. Yeah, and now we start to rotate the whole hand. Yeah. Keep going. Now this is where you start to feel it in the forearms. So we'll go a little faster. Yeah, feel those forearms warming up. And we go a little faster. Yeah, until it almost doesn't work. I'm trying to take flight. All right, shake that out. Ooh, lift those hips, untuck those toes if you need to. Give them a gentle tap. All right, I think we're ready to come back to hands and knees, tabletop position. So, we're back. So we're gonna add some side bending now. Notice I'm gonna lift one foot. Yeah, knee stays on the mat. I'm gonna rotate the leg out to the side. At the same time, now I'm gonna draw that same shoulder towards that same hip, maybe even ear towards shoulder. And what's happening is I'm side bending here. And then I'm going to bring everything back to center and try the other side. Lift, rotate out to the side, shoulder comes to hip, hip comes to shoulder, and the other side is stretching. So we're going to try that a few more times. So switch sides. Lift, hip to shoulder, shoulder to hip, and slowly back. So you feel the waist muscles along one side shortening and along the other side stretching. This is lateral flexion of the spine. So you can imagine your spine kind of moving into a gentle arc, a sideways arc or a C shape. And as we go from side to side, it's a bit like cat-cow, except instead of flexion extension, it's that lateral movement. So we start to feel engagement along one side as we shorten the waist, so we bring shoulder to hip. 
And you feel that stretch along the other side. You're starting to feel your intercostal muscles, the muscles between your ribs, feeling the waist muscles. Let's do this once more either side. Push the ground away. Let's build strength into those hands and wrists and shoulders. And then we'll meet back at center. And let's widen the knees and we'll press into a child pose. Again, any child pose that serves you here. Supporting the forehead, finding the breath once again. Couple more, soft and deep. And soft and slow. All right, let's come back to our tabletops. We're gonna move into something that's a little bit stretchy. And because we're using our sticky mat, um, we don't have to go too far into it, but you might need support under your knees for this. If you do have a blanket nearby, you'll notice how it might be comfortable. Um, so I'm going to set up this way so you can see from this angle. So I'm starting at tabletop, and then I'm slowly walking my knees away from me. Yeah, only as far as there's a little bit of stretch. Um, you'll notice my feet could be right in line with my knees, or I could bring my feet a little bit closer together. And then I'm going to press back a few times, and I'll give you a side view in a bit. Um, and I'm just kind of noticing if there's a little range here. I know the inner knees can be a bit tender here, so you could even be so bold as to, you know, fold your mat to give those knees extra support. Yeah. So here we go, forward and back. And again, I'll give you the side view so you can just get a sense I'm wide might be towards each other and they might not be and I'm kind of keeping the low back fairly long so I'm not going to try to arch here but shifting back yeah and just finding that movement and choosing how wide those knees can be and they might you might find they want to go a little wider or not but we're shifting forward and back and this is a lovely place to be um, on forearm so if that's comfortable you could again shift forward and back on the forearms and you can choose how far you wanna go in either direction. I like sort of wooing the body here into maybe a slightly deeper stretch each time, but, but not being there for too long to kind of keep it moving. Yeah. This is frog pose. You can notice if you want those knees more or less bent, those feet further or closer together. And then we're gonna find a middle place. So the hips are kind of in line with the knees. Your belly isn't too far forward. Your hips aren't too far back. And depending on how your knees are feeling, you might simply rest here in the stretch or just notice one of my legs. I'm gonna lift the foot Bring that forearm or that uh, lower leg forward just a little bit, kind of rocking onto the top of the knee, and then bringing it down. And then I might do the other one, and this can be the tiniest movement. Yeah, I'll give you a side view in a moment. Again, this is a way to kind of keep it moving. You could continue to rock forward and back, or again, you could hold the pose and kind of let gravity take you. It really depends on kind of your tolerance for sensations of stretch. And again, this could be too much of a stressor, and so we don't need to go into our fullest depth here. You kind of choose, but again, if you wanna keep it moving and if your knees are feeling okay, you could add that little movement. This is a bit reminiscent of those side bends we did in tabletop and that we used the lower leg to kind of guide the movement and to get into that hip a bit. So we'll do a couple more either side. I know the knees could be getting achy here. So really listening to the body just creating lots of options for movement here, moving in lots of novel ways. Yeah, awesome. And then we'll meet
feet back at center and nice and slow pushing into those forearms or those hands will guide the knees back in. And now we're gonna come back to seated. And we're gonna come back to our familiar movement of leaning into the hands and rocking the knees. To get pressure off the knees. And then we can do some classic seated poses here. So we've done a lot for the hips. We kinda of wanna keep going. And we always wanna visit um, the movements of the spine. So we're gonna sit up, and this is where sitting on top of a block or a cushion um, might be comfortable. We bring the legs apart. So for some of us, this is gonna look really different. Sometimes getting the legs about this far apart is enough, and then we start to tilt back through the pelvis. So we really wanna feel like we can still be on those ischial tuberosities, those sitting bones. And that's where sitting on a cushion to elevate the hips could help. I'm gonna go a little more wide just because that's where I'm comfortable. And we could also lean into the hands just to help us sit upright, yeah. So just notice my feet here. I'm gonna notice that there's a little bit of range here. And again, the knees could be bent, just like in our scooching earlier in the practice. We could keep those knees a little bent if the hamstrings are tight. We're noticing if we can find a little bit of wiggle room. I'm always looking for a little bit of wiggle room. Yeah. A few more times here. Yeah, and you might feel the core quite strongly just in the challenge of sitting upright in this novel way. We're so used to sitting in chairs that getting down on the mat and sitting in a different way can just awaken the body to a whole other um, experience. Yeah. Okay. So we'll shake out the legs. Just let that be. And then we could even flex the feet a little bit. So we've done some flexing of the feet. It's a good point just to notice where the that is, and then we could find sort of a middle place. There could be a little bend in the knees. Yeah, and we're gonna invite the movements of the spine. Um, so if you need to adjust the legs in any way, please feel free. I'm gonna lean into one hand, and bring the other hand to the shoulder. I'm just gonna notice how it feels to reach the elbow up and invite some side bend. Maybe I wanna reach the arm overhead. Maybe I don't. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna try the other side. Lean into that hand, hand to the shoulder. Let's lift through the elbow. Maybe find a bit of a side bend. Maybe reach the arm overhead. And then back down. So again, see if we can get set up right on top of our sitting bones. And we'll try that again. Hand to the shoulder. Reach. And hand to the shoulder, back down. And hand to the shoulder. Reach. And back down. Let's do that once more either side. Great. Once those hands are down, let's lean into them again. Let's bend the knees. Let's pull. We're gonna come one more time to that wide-legged seat. And we'll invite a little bit of twisting. So again, those legs can be as close as they need to so that you can sit upright. They can be as bent as you need to. And sometimes flexing the feet just helps those legs if they are gonna stay bent. So for twisting, again, we wanna get rooted on those sitting bones. And we can start by kind of turning the navel towards one thigh, maybe bringing the hands to that thigh. Maybe bringing a hand to the outside of the thigh, using the other hand behind, and just noticing if we want to turn the chest a little bit. Sometimes once I'm in this, this twist, I might inhale, sit a little bit taller, exhale, kind of twist a little further. A little taller, a little further. And then we'll slowly come back. And we can twist in lots of different seated positions. This is just one option. And bring hands maybe to the thigh, kind of turning navel towards thigh. Maybe I bring that opposite hand to the outside of the thigh, the other hand behind. I'm sitting tall and then deepening the twist. And 
and then slowly back. Yeah. So we could try a slightly different leg position for this by bringing the legs in. We're going to bend the knee. Or maybe bring the opposite hand to the outside of that knee. The other hand is behind. We're going to sit tall. And again, we're going to turn navel or belly towards that thigh. Inhale, get tall. Exhale, kind of use the leverage of this arm against the leg to help us find a slightly deeper twist. A couple more breaths here, getting tall, deepening the twist. Knowing your head and neck can turn as well. And then slowly unraveling, and we'll switch legs. Again, just, just playing with the idea of a twist in different positions. So I'm leaning into the back hand, got that opposite hand against that opposite knee. I'm sitting tall as I orient navel or belly towards that thigh. Inhale, tall. And exhale, twist. Inhale, tall. And twist. One more breath, just like this. And then we'll slowly come back. And then release. So let's lean into the hands, let's rock the knee. So we've kept our practice pretty low and pretty slow today. And we are once more going to lie down. We'll do a few movements, recline, and then we'll move into final relaxation. So as we lie down, if you'd like to grab your blanket or pillow or anything for your comfort, please feel free. And then slowly make your way to a recline position. And you can keep those knees bent and those feet wide, those arms at your sides. And once more, final bit of rocking those knees from side to side. I thought we'd complete our practice with one more set of twists, and this time recline. So let's meet with the knees at center, and we can hug those knees into the belly. And notice how that feels as we rock from side to side. Great. So we are going to hold on to the left knee and reach the right leg up towards the ceiling. And let's bend and straighten that right leg a few times. And at the same time, maybe we use the weight of the arms to gently hug that left knee a little closer to the belly. Okay. And the next time that right leg is straight, if you so choose, you could keep it straight as you slowly lower it down to the mat. Could also bend the leg to put the foot down. We're just going to go nice and slow and notice how that feels. Uh, so notice if that leg wants to rest long on the mat and if it doesn't you could keep the knee bent and the sole on the mat. So here we are and notice how it feels to be here. Uh, if you'd like a little challenge here I want you to reach through the heel of that right leg, reach up through the crown of the head and then lift your forehead towards the bent knees and the strength of your arms to get you there. And this is so optional at this point in the practice. We'll offer two breaths here and let's notice the natural lift of the pelvic floor, the strength in those shoulders, lifting your forehead to your bent knee. One more breath in. And then we'll slowly release the head back down. Now we're gonna release that left knee, keep the knee bent, point the kneecap to the ceiling. And now I'm gonna take the right hand to the outside of the left thigh and just guide that thigh across to the right to rock me onto the right hip. This is where you might scooch the right hip to the left a smidgen, you might place a pillow or blanket under that left bent knee, or even rest it on the leg. As we reach the left arm away from us, you could turn towards the left. We're going to invite about five deep breaths into the belly here because there's a little bit of kind of a squeeze happening here with that rotation through the spine. This is massaging the abdominal organs with each breath. A couple more.
Wonderful. So let's slowly come back to center. And you could once more hug your knees to the belly and rock from side to side. The final piece of this practice is to do this twist on the other side. So this time we're holding on to the right knee, reaching the left leg up, and we'll bend and straighten a few times. The next time that leg is straight, let's reach through the heel and slowly lower the leg. And you could always bend the knee and place the foot down. Yeah, if you'd like a little extra challenge here, we're going to reach through that left heel. We're going to reach up through the crown of the head. And then using the strength of the arms, we'll lift the forehead towards the bent knee. It doesn't have to get there. We're going to feel a corresponding lift to the pelvic floor. Breathe here. And then slowly release. Now let's release that right knee. Keep the knee bent, point the kneecap to the ceiling. And then bring the left hand to the outside of the right thigh and guiding it over to the left so I can rock onto the left hip. This is where we could scooch the left hip to the right. We could even bring left hand to the outer right thigh as a bit of an anchor, or even tuck that foot onto the leg as we reach the right arm away from us. You could look in that direction, you could close your eyes. We're sending our awareness into the belly, adding this extra massage to the abdominal organs as we offer five breaths here. As you complete those breaths, let's slowly make our way back to center. Again, you could hug those knees to the belly if you want, and we'll rock from side to side. It is time for final relaxation. So of course, feel free to press, press pause, grab anything you might need, or slowly make your way. If you prefer to keep the knees bent in this pose, you could take the feet wide, turn the toes in a little bit, and rest your knees against each other. That will hopefully bring lots of quiet comfort to the low back. Or you can have those legs long, maybe even letting the legs and feet roll out a little bit, maybe turning the palms up or in, or letting the arms move out to the sides. Yeah, as you close your eyes, notice if you're comfortable and make any adjustments for your comfort. Your comfort matters most of all in this pose. So allowing yourself a few moments to become still. And from this place of stillness, begin to tune into the movement of your breath. And softening your belly to receive the inhale, feeling your belly rise. As you exhale, the belly falls without effort. The breath just rolls out. And simply allowing and observing this breath, soft and deep, soft and slow.
and feel the entire back of your body at ease in contact with the floor beneath you. You are held by gravity and fully supported by the floor. There is a feeling of stillness and connection wherever your body touches down. Let's feel this stillness and connection. Notice where your feet touch down. Notice stillness and connection. And notice where the backs of your legs touch down. Notice stillness and connection. And notice where your buttocks and your back touch down. Feeling stillness and connection. Notice where your arms and hands touch down. Feeling stillness and connection. Notice where the back of your head touches down. Stillness and connection. Feel the entire back of your body at ease in contact with the floor beneath you. Fully supported, held by gravity. So you can let go. If you feel a deep need to remain right where you are for a little while longer, please do so for as long as you are comfortable. If you're ready to complete the practice and you would like to join me in a seated position, perhaps wiggle your fingers or toes. Yawn or stretch or turn your head from side to side. Eventually, you might 
And bend your knees. You might roll over to one side, resting your head on your arm. And you might just as slowly make your way to a comfortable upright seat. And whether you're still lying down or sitting upright, perhaps rest a hand to the belly and a hand to the chest. And again, offer yourself some sweetness, a kind word, a prayer, an affirmation just for you. slowly release your hands, perhaps open your eyes. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to us at the Everyday Counts program. I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.